Hey YouTube viewers, Chris here. I wanted to make one final installment here on this little project that I was building with uh, this accelerometer. Um, I made a few little tweaks to the display. I'd, I'd like to show those to you because I thought it was kind of cool. I, uh, I added, I improved the little crosshairs and, and uh, put the pitch and roll values on there, kitty corner to where the simulated bubble will be. And then uh, you could see, where's the, where's the set here? See, I got a little spirit level on there. Okay, so anyway, uh, the purpose of this video is to talk about calibration. Um, I see a lot of folks and hobbyists and students and stuff using this chip with various breakout boards, and they're all wondering why they're not getting the values they're supposed to from it. Well, that's because it needs to be precision calibrated. Now, what I've done here, you see I made a little piece of steel here with four levelers on it. So if I put this bubble on there, and I can get the thing really level. And I also have this aluminum precision machined piece of aluminum that's very square on all sides. It's very flat. So that I used to level. And you can see here I, I mounted the little breakout board with some hot glue into the uh, box. And the edges of the chip are parallel the, with the front of the chip and the side of the chip as, as much as I could possibly get. Now, uh, again, calibration. This, this, to, cal to use this chip accurately, it's very important that you calibrate it as precisely as possible. What you, if you remember your seventh grade math, this is basically you're going to do a you're going to do a two endpoint calibration of each of the three axes, which is essentially the, the slope of a line. You're going to have the gain and an offset for each axis. So well, in order to get those values, you have to have very precise flat surfaces to record them. And I had a, you have a car here, and incidentally, the, you need to follow the equations set out in this application note here. Um, application no a and 10 10 57 and you'll see down here equations 17 and 18 is the magic with this device okay you have to follow those so you have to take you have to record the x and y values from the acceleration register when it's in the minus 1g position and the plus 1G position. And in each one of those it has to be precisely level. So you record those values and as you can see here I recorded mine down on a little card. So in each of the each of the three axes I record the value of the register. And incidentally and then you use yeah and then you use those equations to calculate an offset and a gain factor for each one. And those are the values that you put into uh, the equations in the software. I noticed the, with this with this particular breakout board I purchased with this particular flavor of the chip on it, the offset that I came up with for the z-axis is too large to actually even fit in the hardware z-axis offset register, which is kind of weird. I see a lot of people complaining about they hook it up and they multiply each of the x, y, and z acceleration values by 3.9 millijes and wonder why they're all off. Well, you can't just do that. You have to do a precision calibration. All right? And all of that information is in that application note 1057. And here's my screen here obviously and then I can I can rotate the uh, you know, the plate to what it's mounted on. Each one of these sides is very precisely machined, so I can take it around and then each, each side is very level. I saw that Adafruit uses a block of wood. Well, if using a block of wood with the chip mounted, you can't get the negative z-axis because the board would be in the way. Okay, So after you get the offsets and gain factors, you plug them. I'm going to show you real fast here. I, I'm going to try to keep this under five minutes or so. This is going to take forever. Um, here, I'll bring up the. Here's the code in the editor. And as you can see, I have my three gain factors that I came up with from those two equations. And down at the bottom is here where I. You'll see where I put in my. Here's the, here's the magic calculations right here. 
where you apply the slope and offsets. So those are the three gains. So you take the value from each x, y, and z that you read directly. You, you subtract the offset and divide by the gain. Okay, and then that will give you the, uh, the corrected, calibrated value in G. And if you notice in my program here, it's very close. So right now I'm showing uh, 0, 0 in the X and Y. Incidentally, you see one tick, one bounce, one LSB is equal to about 3.9 millijs if you watch. So I'm in the Z axis. So the more precision you get in calibrating the slope and offset for each of the three axes, the more accurate your pitch and roll values are going to be in degrees. And I've proven that. I mean, it took me a long time to get this calibrated really good. So I encourage you to follow the, um, follow the application note and don't use a block of wood and um, set up a little fixture and a little jig that you can mount it in so you can calibrate it. And forget about the internal offset registers, just do it in software. The final note I wanted to stress that I run the X, Y, and Z values that I read from the acceleration registers, I run those through a rolling boxcar average of 16 terms. It takes 16 values in, throws away the highest and the lowest, and then and so forth, puts a new one in, throws away an old one, puts a new one in, throws away an old one. If you put too many terms in the average, then this won't be very responsive. So again, to summarize in one sentence here, set up a precision calibration jig and really take the time to do the precision and you'll be happy with the results. Take care. Thanks for watching.